Hello guys, so I am driving to the post office real quick to drop off. I have a ton of books that I'm shipping out to you guys. I posted it on my Instagram and then I had also posted thanks to everyone who purchased some books because we had a $900 vet bill yesterday. Isn't that always great? And I'm like, oh, I'll sell some books and get some new ones. I feel like more and more I have not been like really caring about keeping books that I've read unless it's like a very favorite author because my bookshelves get so full that I can't keep them organized. I don't want to get more shelves like because I don't know what kind of space I'm going to be working with once we move. Anyways, Dax and Tucker were due for their yearly shots. We were kind of saying how we needed to make the appointment and then sure enough on Friday had a little dog emergency I can and I don't know like you know I love Ken love my husband we've been married almost 25 years but you know there's sometimes things can get a little difficult where you're just like why why are you doing this basically he was down in his office late in the day on Friday and decided that he was going to use scissors to cut some knots out of Tucker's like underneath his ears. I'm the one that grooms the dogs. Everyone listening probably knows this but for some reason he thought he was doing a nice thing by cutting these knots off of Tucker's under his ears because he gets them really bad and he clipped him with the scissors. The crazy thing, it like clipped his skin. The crazy thing is, is it like, it he could see red, like that's what made him notice that he, cause he was like, say you had a knot and he's like kind of pulling on it with this, I can visualize it in my, I know exactly what he was doing. I know you do not cut those knots out with scissors. You use the clippers, the electric razor thingy, cause you won't cut their skin, you know what I mean? He's like, oh no, what should we do? I'm like, it's not bleeding. It doesn't look that bad. As long as he doesn't start like scratching on it and stuff like that, it'll probably heal on its own. Through the weekend, we kept an eye on it. Tucker was spoiled like crazy because Ken just felt so bad. And Monday he called the vet. He's like, we need to get him in. So they not only got their shots, he got a whole like, I think the charge was for like wound cleaning because they basically shaved the whole area, cleaned it really good. It didn't need stitches. It probably could have used stitches if he would have taken them immediately on Friday. They could have probably stitched it, but because the healing process has already started, they put them on an antibiotic to prevent infection and they're gonna wait two to four weeks to see if it will heal on its own. And then something like if it doesn't, then they actually can go in and do like stitches weeks later which just blows my mind it's basically if it just doesn't close up and heal on its own so he has this ridiculous looking we took chase had this ski mask and we just cut holes in it for his ears they were like you need to put some sort of like turtleneck cut like the sleeve from a sweatshirt something that you can basically put over the area one so it stays clean when he's outside goldens if you have one they love to just go out and roll around in the grass and then also just so he doesn't like scratch it which i came home yesterday after the vet appointment we went to casco and he had the thing pulled down and he had scratched it you could tell he irritated it so I literally just have to like babysit him 24 seven, have someone watching him. Cause he was just, he was bad just like this when he got um, neutered. He just took forever to heal cause he would not quit licking himself. So he's just little, little brat in that way. But I'm gonna run this um, stuff into the post office. I'll be right back. I have all these thoughts in my head. I'm just gonna start blurting things out and this video is just gonna be, I swear I'm not trying to make it like a bitch session, but I just feel like I've been doing so much like soul searching lately. And I briefly talked about this when I was filming my last vlog and I cut it all out because I feel like I just talk in circles. Um, I had mentioned how grateful and happy I was that I went to book club with my friends um, just because we're such great support for one another and we all have different things going on in our lives and it's just always feels good to talk about whatever it is you're going through. And I 
have talked to my friends individually and in the group setting of like, I don't know what I want to do. Like, part of me just feels pulled to like, I don't even want to use the word career because I don't really feel like I, oh, I want this whole new career. Next thing you know, I'm going to be a blah, whatever. And I'm going to use a, an example. It's not that I'm looking for that, but I'm like, look, it's more about finding a purpose. And I would love for that purpose to be something that actually like is helpful. Like I want to just do something that has meaning and value behind it. I want to use, utilize my time wisely. But then at the same time, I'm like, okay, I could go do this. I could go do that. And the hourly pay is just so bad <laughs> that I'm like, why would I go do that when I can sell on TikTok shop and make practically just as much for a month? So it's so just, this whole video is just going to be crap, guys. I debated, I'm like, because I have, actually I have questions from my Instagram to share with you guys, like answer some of these questions. And there's some good ones in there. I, I'm going to answer some of them. I just have felt... <clears throat> like kind of overwhelmed and stressed lately which I feel like of course I'm going to I'm going to be sort of high strung sort of stressed sort of like running in circles like a chicken with my head cut off because we just have a lot going on with the house I feel like I'm trying to figure out my life but then I'm trying to tell myself it's okay to put that on hold because we could end up moving 45 minutes south of here let's just say as an example well I don't want to get a job like here if I'm going to be living 45 minutes that way and I don't want to quit in a month or two you know what I mean so like I'm trying to take things one step at a time and I feel like it'll all fall into place and then Ken tells me today that he was just talking to someone on the phone was explaining the business model and this and that and he's like they need help with their social media stuff okay and then I'm like, I just, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. It makes me sound crazy, I'm, but I feel crazy, so that's okay. Let's just change the subject by, let's answer some good questions. One of them, while well, I'm trying to bring this up, I gotta look at my archives. Um, <laughs> what is the hardest thing about being a parent? Oh gosh, the worry. For me, I'm such a worry wart and I always think the negative. My brain all the time goes to like worst case scenario. And also, I guess just that fear of your kids not making the best choice. I don't want I and I say best because there's not always the right choice or wrong choice. It's sometimes could go either way, but like you just want the best for them so much that it <laughs> this must be the theme of the video. Um, sometimes drives me crazy. As soon as I start talking like this, my, my cough comes back. That's why I always laugh where people say, oh, having young kids is so hard. And then I'm always like, just wait till they're adults. Then you'll see that's the hard stuff. And I think it's not that it's harder. It's just more stressful because it's a difference between helping your first grader with their spelling words and they're just not getting it at the same time you know your other two kids are running through the house fighting or something like that and you're like oh my god you want to pull your hair out versus a moment where your kids struggling with their mental health or um something with the relationship that they're in and and i just feel all that so strongly so yeah that that's the hardest part it's just the the worry will you miss this house yeah I think so I won't miss cleaning it <laughs> um but yeah god there's so many times I film things in videos and I end up cutting them out because I just sometimes think I'm being so ridiculous but today I just don't care so if any of this is repetitive oh well but um I remember when we moved from our other house that we built which was with a builder where, hey, pick from one of eight plans, you know, and you pick your house out and you can customize very little. So that process was way different than this process where you're building a custom home and you can do whatever you want. I didn't really get emotional probably a single time. And I think it was because, you know, we were going to a house that was twice as big and all this property and 
like it just had all these like additional new exciting things where in this case we're obviously going to be sacrificing a lot of things of course there's going to be feelings of like that sad but yeah there's definitely a lot of things that i will miss how are your kids doing any summer plans um yeah they're actually gosh i want to get in trouble for spilling the tea because i know carly will tell you soon she has something really exciting going on that's going to be new for her um that if it all works out it will um kind of control how her whole entire summer is going to go because it's just like a summer thing and then um Chase is starting a new job and he is going to be starting college soon as well and um, there was a question to um, is Blake in college what's his major so Blake is already in college he's in college for like IT technology and Chase wants to go into school go to college for like computer related thing as well something different than um Blake, but also like technology computer related. All right, let's go back up. Do you fear getting older? Mm. <clears throat> it's not that I fear getting older, but a friend of mine sent me this reel through Instagram the other day and I actually had Ken watch it and it was the whole story about like, okay, let's say the average, well, the average person lives 75 years and it showed like a strip of paper that's this long and the sky's like, but I'm 51. So my paper's already down to this size. So I, let's just for round even numbers. So let's say you have 25 years left. Well, half of your life is going to be spent working. So then it takes it down to this size and then the point of the story is this is all you have left so what are you going to do with the small strip of time that you have left the majority of it is time that you have left outside of like potentially working um some of that hopefully you're not working till you're 75 but whatever um spending that time with friends family hobbies travel whatever the things are that make you happy but also to think about um if you are working which most people at 50 still are um are you in a job that brings you joy something that you love something that you're proud of and i was like now you know where i'm coming from where you know if i could post youtube videos every day and sit and talk to you guys every day and share my life and it'd be like it was five years ago i would still do it unfortunately there's not enough people that want to hear and see just me but with the whole family that would be different and I get that and to YouTube's just not what it was five years ago you know so so I don't fear getting older but I fear I guess just figuring out what the next quarter or a third or whatever because I don't know how long I'm gonna live um this remaining part of my life what I want it to look like and you know I can sit and dream of grandkids and all the happy fun stuff but there also has to be you know part of me who's productive member of society makes money um so we can travel more and you know what I mean like when you have things in your life that you want and you need you have to also have a means to pay for those things so would you ever travel to Japan? Absolutely, I would love that. If you could go back and experience one day from your past, which would you choose? I'm just gonna say the most cliche answer ever. Obviously my wedding day, the birth of my children. Actually, I really know exactly what day I would go back to. I've thought about this before, it just clicked in my head. What I wouldn't give. Why is this gonna make me emotional? <clears throat> Because Ken and I have talked about this before, and I get choked up about the dumbest stuff. If we could go back in time, we've said we'd go back to when Carly was like two years old. So Carly's two, Chase is four, Blake is six, and Andrew is 11. Life was as crazy as can be, but oh my god, it was so much fun. So... I take back my first answer. That's what I would do. I would pick a moment in time. It doesn't even have to be a specific day. Let's just make it Carly's second birthday. That's the day we're going back to. Like I actually, I can picture it and I don't even know what dress she had on. How are you feeling mentally lately? I know you said you were struggling with sleep. All right, remember how I said earlier that when my kids go through things, I feel like I go through it too. Um, yeah, there's been some 
rough days over the past couple of months that like it'll just be a day things have happened conversations have taken place whatever the case may be where then when I lay down at night I've realized lately how much that my reading is such a um, mental escape from reality that um, sometimes it'll be like six o'clock at night and I'm getting ready to cook dinner and I'm like I cannot wait for this next portion of the day where I'm just cleaning up the kitchen maybe putting away my laundry winding down for the night and I get to read why is that not because I can't wait to get into that book that I'm reading but because I can't wait for my brain to escape thinking about the reality of whatever it is that's going on in that day and I guess I didn't realize before how much of like reading it's just so good for me and my mental health that last night here's an example nothing was even happened yesterday yesterday was a completely fine day and then when I got in bed about 9 30 10 o'clock at night I was just coughing up a storm again I woke up at like 3 3 30 in the morning which I usually do I don't know why like I wake up so and what'll happen I'll wake up at 3 30 then it'll be 4 30 5 30 6 30 it's like every hour so anyways, I woke up and I just felt anxious because I coughed a few times and I tried to not like cough real loud because I'm trying to like not wake up Ken. And so I decided to like, I'm just going to go take a steam shower because the steam just kind of helps when you have cough. And yeah, I just, I felt like I'm not going to sit here and fight my cough and fight my anxiety. I'm just going to go take a shower at 3.30 in the morning. And honestly, I can remember that part happening. I can't even remember like getting back into bed, but clearly I did. How does Carly feel about you moving? Not great. Let's be honest. She's putting on a good face for everyone, but she's definitely felt like it's added stress to her own life. And of course, when you're 19 years old, you think your life is so stressful and you have no idea, but she just doesn't want to move out of our little community. She doesn't want to move far because she doesn't want to be far from her friends. And I keep explaining to her that first of all, eight years ago when we bought our property, we moved in June will be seven years. But when we bought the property eight years ago, we really didn't want to live in this town. We were already going south and the kids all begged us, please, we don't want to leave our schools and blah, 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 blah. So we were like giving it one last shot to try to find something around here. And we did. So it all played out the way it was meant to. But I'm not doing that again. Like if the perfect house comes up and it's two miles from here, we're in the same community, fine. But am I like crossing my fingers and hoping that that happens? No, I'm actually not because Ken and I have both said that this general area, even though we both grew up in Toledo, Ohio, um, this general vicinity of where we live so close to the Michigan and Ohio border, we have lived here our whole entire lives. And we wouldn't mind some different scenery, different restaurants, stores, just, you know, driving down the road to look a little different than it's looked the past 50 years of my life, you know? That doesn't mean I'm purposely going to say, this is where we're going 45 minutes south, but anything between here and there, well, not anything, because there's some areas that I wouldn't consider, but you know what I mean? Like, we don't want to go too far from this general area, because the whole point is staying close to our kids. Um, <clears throat> you know, if we move a little bit further south and Carly ends up coming back to this area when it's her turn to buy a house, that's great. Like, this is a great town, a great area. I just don't feel drawn that I, like, have to stay here, you know? But like I said, if the perfect house would come along, fine. But yeah, she'll she'll say, like, are, are you going to at least consider? I'm like, Carly, I look at every house that goes up for sale within a 50-mile radius. So we'll see. Favorite Sex in the City character and thoughts on And Just Like That. Okay, I shared that I've been re-watching all the Sex in the City episodes from the very beginning. And my favorite would be Carrie. Although, she can be really dumb sometimes. Carrie... Charlotte, Miranda, no, probably Samantha the Miranda. I've never been a big Miranda fan. 
and only because I know what's coming. I feel like she's so mean to Steve. She, she can be a really mean person. Like I don't think any thing or anyone ever makes her happy and then when you talk about in just like that i love it by the way i think they're doing a great job with the whole series she's even mean there like she's mean to everyone am i not am i right i do wish samantha was in and just like that though the place you would like to travel to from your bucket list I just have a bucket list to stay in one of those huts over the water in like Tahiti, Bora Bora, like one of those locations. It's just whether or not it's ever going to happen because I just don't know about being on an airplane for so long. I'm like, gotta be on this plane, gotta be on that plane. And then you're on like a puddle jumper plane. Like, I don't, I don't know. I want to do that someday. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to bring myself to do it. We'll see. Currently reading Dark Matter. How many stars did you rate that book? Five stars. It's so good. It's coming out. Is it a series? I don't know what streaming platform it is, but it's coming out fairly soon and it looks really good. I love that book. What will you miss most about the house? Uh, probably the privacy and just driving down the driveway and looking at the house and being like, holy crap, this is my house. Like, I still feel that way. It still sometimes feels like a dream. Just even thinking back into how it all happened, it just sometimes still doesn't feel real. Like it really is truly a dream home and I'm just, I feel grateful that we got to experience it to be honest. Favorite and least favorite thing about each of your kids. That's brutal. Could you imagine what if somebody asked Carly that question? Favorite and least favorite. Actually, somebody probably has asked her that question, and I already know what she would say about me, that I ask too many questions. Because I'll be like, oh, how did this go? Good. Oh, who was there? Oh, did you do this? Oh, did that? Ha you know, and she'd be like, oh, too many questions. Something you would tell a 23-year-old who feels so lost career-wise and has no idea what to do. <laughs> there are people who spend their whole entire life trying to figure that out or you maybe get so You're in a career for so many years and you're like, it's just not making me happy anymore I'm gonna try something new. I think that's what if you think about what even the word life even means It's about living experiences trying new things successes failures like we're, you're gonna have it all so I think I think what I would tell my kids in this situation is you don't know something unless you try. And it's the same thing I tell myself. Like when I say, you know what, maybe I'll just go get a job at like a bookstore. But what if I hate it? What if I don't really want to deal with customer service? What if this, well, how will I know unless I try it? You know what I mean? Like if, I know it's tough because there's that fine line between figuring out doing what you love but then also doing what pays the bills and not everybody is in the position especially when you're younger at 23 to only worry about doing what you love those are kind of the years of your life that you have to figure out you know whatever your future goals are figuring out how am I gonna pay for this maybe you need a new car or maybe you want to move out or buy your own house like so there's a little bit of trickiness behind trying to figure out what is going to work the best for me personally but also financially but I still think at the end of the day you have to think of the same situation and that you're not going to know if something is a good fit for you unless you try it first I would venture to say if you would ask any 50 year old what were you doing at 23 years old they're not doing that same thing anymore there might be maybe five percent that graduated from college got their degree as an engineer and they're still an engineer but even then, sometimes a person who went to college for engineering, maybe they get into teaching, or maybe they get into like new product development, something that's not even like what they even imagined they were going to do with their degree at 23 years old. So I think the biggest mistake that young people make is trying to figure out what do I want to do for the rest of my life? Because it doesn't matter. Ask yourself, what do you want to do right now? 
because your circumstances might change as time goes on. I guess what I'm getting at is you can plan and plan and plan and think you have your whole life figured out and things are never gonna go the way that you think they're going to. Things are going to happen and change and you're gonna be okay no matter what. No matter what. Things could always be way worse and all you could do each day is show up be the best version of yourself and do what feels right right in this moment. I don't know. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening to this video. It really did start out as like a whole rant fest. There was even another whole story that I was going to tell you guys that, you know what? I'll vlog it tomorrow because I need to show you what the heck happened. It's basically along the lines of I'm married to a man who, yes, this is going back to Ken again. We're bringing it full circle that we always have something that's this tiny little project and it ends up turning out into a enormous headache. Things just, something always goes wrong. Why is that the case? I know that was all very vague and won't make sense. I'll vlog it. I'll share it with you guys in my next video. It's, it's a mess, so. Thank you guys for watching. Make it a great weekend. Sorry that this was just me rambling the whole time. Like I said, I can make a video like this every day. I'm gonna be talking about stuff that has zero point to it. Um, other than me just telling you what's going on in my life and how I feel about everything. Cause that's, that's where we're at these days.